Hey everyone, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the peaches, we're gonna be thinning them. In fact, I've already taken down about 500 peaches off of these two trees. Um, you can see that there's actually tons of peaches down here on the ground. You guys can make these out, these really small peaches. They're all over the place, and I kinda just took them off and let them fall. What I've been surprised this year is that I haven't seen any plum cacurlio damage on these trees, on the fruits. It's been really shocking. I did see it on a couple of other peaches in the front of the yard, but those are younger trees. Um, those are probably more susceptible varieties to the plum cacurlio. Um, so I don't know. It's pretty weird. I was expecting those to come in here kind of damage a lot of fruits even some of those fruits start to fall off uh, but that hasn't happened so I went ahead and thinned them out anyway and you can see I've thinned them out to about three inches apart although on these lower branches here these more interesting intricate system of branches at a lower point these are all mostly either growing downwards or horizontally and because of that they had set a lot more fruit. They had a lot more um, flowers on these lower portions of the tree. Whereas in the higher portions of the tree, we had pretty good fruit set and flowers, but because these, these limbs are growing vertically, they don't set or flower nearly as much. Um, so you can see a lot of the fruit I really wanted to be down here anyway, because it's more accessible to me. I had to get a ladder to get all the way up in here. In fact, some of these fruits I may not even be able to reach, which is really gonna become an issue because I wanna protect every single peach because as soon as the birds in this area know that the peaches exist, um, they even get through my organza bags and it's really, it becomes a problem and I don't get any peaches. So I'm gonna be bagging all of these peaches at a certain time of the year when I find time before they ripen before the birds get any idea that they exist, we're gonna bag every single one because I do not want these birds to even have any clue that they're here. But it's pretty nice that that's kind of how nature works itself out, that the, the fruit at the top of the tree is a lot less than the fruit at the bottom of the tree. It's really cool uh, how that really just whole thing plays out. So for me, I got up in here and I thinned out more of this and less of this. So you can see the spacing between the fruits down here is a lot closer together. Maybe even an inch on some of these, maybe even two inches. You can see this is real close. This is not probably gonna work in that these peaches are gonna get so large that um, they're probably going to bump into each other and maybe even bruise each other. So I'm gonna come in here and take this one off. You really just wanna twist them and they come off. And then for me, I just toss them on the ground. If they are infected with the plum cacurlio, dispose of them, definitely. Do not put them on the ground um, because that's just gonna complete that life cycle, I would imagine, of the cacurlio, which could then become a real big issue down the road. Now, these really small fruits, these really small ones here, most of them I took off. These must have set a bit later or even flowered a bit later. Um, those seem so far behind and maybe even that the tree was sort of rejecting them anyway that I took a lot of those off and you can see there's actually one down in here you guys can make that out so I just took this one out because this is probably gonna come off anyway if I had to guess um, but yeah for the most part their space about three inches apart is really a good spacing, five inches apart is also a great spacing if you wanna be more conservative. Uh, for me, I'm in this to grow fruit. So I'm trying to push these trees to their limit and also get a lot of fruit down here on the lower portion. So uh, a lot of this up here really doesn't have a whole lot of fruit, believe it or not. Um, so really focusing on the numbers down here. And I would say each tree has roughly 250 fruits um, currently on the tree. So that's a total of 500 from these two trees. This is their fourth year. This is the fourth spring that these trees have gone through. They're on standard rootstocks. We have Red Haven here on the left and then Alberta on the right. 
and um, yeah, they just perform spectacularly. I've had no issues with them. Other than the, the potential for late frosts, uh, we do have problems with the birds. The plum cacurleo is not a huge issue, it seems like here, at least because I've been good about controlling it. We did start to get some uh, peach leaf curl for the first time on the Alberta tree. You do have to watch out for the oozing of the sap on these trees. And a lot of times that oozing is just an indicator that the tree is damaged and that's what it's doing is kind of uh, repairing itself. We had some oozing up here and we've had some oozing down in here on this particular tree. And uh, the tree has repaired itself nicely. As long as the trees are not continuously oozing, um, you should be all right. And that's sort of a natural thing that the tree does. But you really don't want these trees to get infected with some sort of disease. Um, that would be really not good. And also those points of entry that the tree is then repairing itself is a nice entry point for borers. So um, really pay attention to those portions and you maybe want to seal them up yourself. That's up to you. But uh, yeah, for the most part, these trees have been really problem free. And I'll get a lot of these peaches and sometime in late July, early August even even um, towards September if the birds leave these trees alone. Um, so that's the goal this year, is to really get these fruits, we thin them out, but then also to protect them. Our job is not done just yet. We have to protect every single fruit on here because the cat birds in this area that have certainly been colonized, I got about three or four different types of birds that live in these trees and live in the area and uh, they're quite territorial and if you're not careful um, the catbirds certainly are going to recognize that there is indeed peaches here they run off from the tree with an entire peach in their claws with the organza bag sometimes they even break through it and uh yeah it just becomes a bit of an issue so we're gonna see how this this works out for us this strategy this year but that was kind of a, a little bit on thinning peaches, guys. You don't want to do it when these fruits are too small, by the way. You want them to be about three-fourths inch or about an inch in diameter. Because um, if you do it too soon, you're going to actually maybe have an issue with the pits in the fruit when you harvest them. And then also, if you do it too late, you're not going to really get too much of a benefit uh, from an increased size in the fruit. So definitely do it at the right time look it up depending on what the stone fruit is you may not even have to thin them depending on the fruit you may not even have to thin them um, and then there's different spacings for different things like plums have a closer spacing this is probably a better spacing here for plums whereas what I should do with this is come in here and actually thin this out so that now this is about three inches apart right here and that's the appropriate spacing for the uh, the peaches. Same thing with the nectarines, three to five inches. Look up the particular spacing that is appropriate. If you're uh, kind of wondering, you know, what should I do for my apricots or my plums or you know the cherries, as an example. Um, even though you don't have to thin out the cherries, but it's good to look this stuff up and do your research. All right, guys. Take care. We'll catch you off for uh, tomorrow's video. All right. Thanks for watching.